I have this OS FS120 Surface engine open yet again. And the reason I have it open now is the last time I ran it, I heard some bearing noise. So I figured I needed to try and get this thing apart again. And so I could at least replace the bearings for the owner. So Rob, this is your engine. And I want to talk a little bit about these parts because I found some interesting things. So, like I said, this is the 120. Here's the crank click crank case. All cleaned up, ready to accept bearings. I was able, obviously, to get the wrist pin out of the piston and subsequently disassemble, disassemble the, complete, uh, the remainder of the engine. Uh, these parts, needless to say, were pretty nasty. I do not have pictures of them before because I kind of tore the thing apart last night again and just immediately started soaking them. Now the steel parts like this, if they're rusty, I will put them in calcium lime rust remover, CLR, and then as soon as they've soaked and the rust is gone, wipe them down with alcohol real good and then lube them up and oil them really well. That's why this has got a sheen to it because it's all oiled up because the calcium lime rust remover, the CLR, unfortunately will open up the pores in the steel and if you don't immediately protect it with oil, uh, the surface rust will start forming again. So, some interesting things here. If uh, anyone that's familiar with the Surpass series of four-stroke engines realizes that there's this hole in the back of the crankcase, and that's where you're supposed to extract this wrist pin, which on an engine that has sat or has not been run for a long time, that's obviously going to be a point where it's very stuck, stuck, uh, gummed up and very difficult to get that pin out, especially if you don't have a means to extract it. But if you look at this sleeve, this sleeve is, is pristine, it's in nice condition, but the thing that's nice about it is it's got this little mark here, this wear mark, not a wear mark, but just a uh, discoloration from where that hole is, so it always gives me a good way to line up and make sure I put the sleeve in exactly the same spot because you've got that mark there from the wear mark or, you know, it, external temperatures and things can, uh, and can touch it there. Uh, one thing that is interesting about this piston is that on other Surpass engines I've opened up, the 26, the 48, 20, 70, they all had, you had to pull the you know, wrist pin out, you know, but on both of those sides the wrist pin had Teflon pads on both sides. This one is different. This one, you're not able to push, once you get that wrist pin free and moving, you're not able to push it out and go this way with it. Uh, on ASP engines, they made sure that that didn't happen by making that hole in the, that side of the piston smaller so the wrist pin could never go out that way. Uh, but what OS has done on this 120 Surpass is there's actually a wrist, there's actually a, a little C-clip, not a C-clip, but a retaining wire in here that actually precludes that wrist pin from being pushed out that way so you can never push it out and then have to figure out how the hell to get it to go back that way. Uh, the funny thing that was with this is that uh, I was actually able to get the crankshaft or the connecting rod off without extracting the crankshaft which was odd but I think it all had to do with how well I got this thing cleaned up. If you can see this thing just slides smooth as silk on here. There's no excess play or anything this thing's in great shape now but I was able to just get that the whole piston and everything came off then I just afterwards went back and and pulled this wrist pin out and made sure it was clean and oiled up and lubed up real good so that it'll smooth it'll slide really smoothly now here are the bearings that came out of this engine these were really rusty really rusty and I soaked them in calcium lime rust remover and I don't intend on reusing them by any means I just wanted to see how well that CLR would clean them up and it did a pretty good job now the reason this one looks weird is this rear bearing was actually it's got some kind of strange clear plastic or discolored plastic uh, thing holding the race on on this side and this side was actually shielded a metal shield which you should never have and it, the shield was actually facing backwards so and it was hard to tell that just because it was so rusty well, I've since removed that shield and uh, oiled this thing up real good. It still turns. The thing is, I can hear it. So that's not a good thing. Now this front bearing, 
shield on the front as it should have been and it was open in the back like it should have been. This one turns pretty decent too. I can kind of hear it, but man, I could have sworn it was the front bearing that I heard when I was running this engine last. Like I said, I'm not going to reuse these bearings by any means. I've got new bearings on order. So it's just interesting that, you know, they do seem fairly smooth, but obviously the new ones will be better. Um, let's see if there's anything else here to talk about. We talked about the piston, crankcase, crankshaft, timing gear, all steel, just soaked in CLR, cleaned off with alcohol afterwards, and lubed up really well. So that's really all I'm going to do. I, I cleaned up this head obviously last time, so that doesn't need any attention at all this time. It was mainly just being able to get the bearings out, inspect the crankcase, make sure it's nice and clean inside there, and it's in good shape. Uh, I have no idea how old this engine is, but it sure as hell is going to run really well now once we get these bearings replaced. And as soon as they are here, which should be the end of the week, I'll probably throw another video together with this information on there to show the reassembly of this engine. And then obviously there's going to be more videos of the engine running because I'm going to want to run the hell out of this thing just because it's fun. Well, these bearings for this OS FS120 Surpass arrived yesterday, so now the process to start rebuilding this engine with the right bearings. So here's the 6002 and uh, 6000. Obviously, this will be the front bearing. So we'll get to removing one of these shields. Shield removed. Now this rear bearing is shielded on both sides, so we've got to remove both of those. And those shields are removed. So now these bearings are ready to drop in here. So what I'm going to do is put this front bearing in place first. It's already housing there. It's got some oil on it. I'm going to oil this bearing up a little bit here. i got my heat gun here. So what I'm going to do is move my press over. this in place here. Drop that. Okay, I've got the rear bearing and an impact socket that's just the right size to use to press that in place. So I'm going to heat this case up. Now we'll do our crankshaft. I don't know if this Still use that socket on the crankshaft too. Roll this up real good. Shaft is installed. So we can continue on with the reassembly now. We're on 
good there. So the next thing is I've got my piston connecting rod, wrist pin, and then that little Teflon piece that goes in the one side. So as I said in the last one, there's a wire retainer that keeps that wrist pin from going forward, so that also means that this is the orientation of the piston. And I don't see a front or a back on this, but you can tell by the chamfered side of that connecting rod that that part faces out. So that means this goes just like this. But, you know what, I don't want to do it like this because I want to do it as if I actually had this off. Pull the wrist pin off, which I didn't need to do to get at the piston to come off. But let's pretend like that's how we're reassembling this. So I got the connecting rod on. My piston, the wrist or the retaining pin goes here. So this goes on like this. Now I'm going to rotate this down to a point where I can see the hole. And you know what I'm going to do to make this easier? I'm just going to go ahead and insert this in one side. Just get this started in the piston and then find the connecting rod. That's going in the piston, I just kind of kind of like a game of operation. You gotta try and and there we have it. piston installed. <clears throat> now here I want to make sure I lube the inside and outside of this really well. And I'm going to make, pay special attention to this mark because I want it to face out of that window so I'm just going to kind of lightly put this in here and kind of start twisting it in a screwing motion. Let me find my dark spot again here. I'm just kind of twist it on until you get it to go over the ring just like that and I've got my hole lined up just the way it was and voila sleeve is installed now too so that's pretty much the stuff for this engine right there like I said all the other assembly has been covered already and this head didn't need any attention at all so I think that's where we're going to leave this right now and then the next video of this engine will be me doing a test run with these new bearings.